So I'm not saying, well, do you believe this or do you believe that or do you follow this religion? Or It's not that that kind of is the filter. The filter is, you know, are you a human that values and cares about other humans? There are coaches who are very bright. Yes. And, you know, they've gone a course and they've figured something out and now they're teaching that to people, but they just teach this thing. Yeah. And that's the only thing they do mm -hmm. and they do it their way or the highway. Right. And there's no evolution for them. Right. And because there's no evolution for them, there's no evolution for the people that are coming through. Right. Hey there, superstar. I'm so excited to share that I'm here with Leanne and we're talking about culture, how to build a group coaching culture that transforms people, that's enjoyable for you. Uh, what are the elements of that? What it looks like? And we're gonna share a little bit about what that looked like in my culture and the big evolution that I've gone through. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the biggest things that I've discovered through developing this model, this business of leading a group, leading a group, group coaching program, leading a mastermind program, leading retreats, leading groups of people, is the idea of building a culture. Mm -hmm. Building a culture. What does it look like to build a culture? So you've been in my culture. You're the only person that's seen the culture from beginning to where it is now. Yeah. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to share some of what you've seen, how you've seen the culture evolve. To give a little bit of background, Leanne was my very first inner circle enrollee from a retreat. So she attended my very first retreat and enrolled into Inner Circle, and she's still in the Inner Circle eight years later, right? <laughs> so, um, so what have you seen over the course of those eight years? What does it mean to build a culture? In, uh, well, I've seen a lot. <laughs> she's seen a lot. She's seen yeah. a lot. One of the reasons I'm still here after eight years and that I think is important to the culture that you've created is that it's always evolving mm -hmm. and and I've watched you evolve yeah you know from from someone who thought yoga was too woo woo if you don't mind me saying this you can say anything you want okay I am very <laughs> open with these people okay there's really very little that I have not shared with them okay so yeah so yeah I mean remember you yoga was too woo mm -hmm. right it's too slow too slow to now boring Boring, right? <laughs> right? And and it used to. I remember the very first uh, family vacation, with you know when we get together as a, as a group in person, and it was very like bring those laptops. laptops. You know, we're gonna do strategy. Like we are break it out. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna figure it out. And it was yeah. very mental, mental and very like. Mm. Mm -hmm. And now. It's pretty much the opposite. Well, right. We'll do <laughs> sound cleansing. Things <laughs> breath, work. breath work. But I mean, let me be clear. What I found is that those things made the biggest difference in my business. Totally. And we'll come back to culture. I guess we'll talk first about my evolution because, yeah. you know, if we're talking about building a culture, the most important aspect of that culture really to begin with is you. Because sure. you're the one setting the tone of the culture, yeah. right? So what you're saying is that in, in experiencing the culture, the biggest shift you saw or the, the, the first one that comes to mind is the change that I've made. For sure. And what I've found in my personal work is that the work that I did on me inside had a lot more faster, bigger impact on the business than the strategic stuff that I kept trying to recycle over and over and over and like map it all out, right? So yeah, back to the, the first retreat, yeah. the first family vacation, which mm -hmm. is what we do just with the members of the inner circle. We had, I have a picture, we had our oh, yeah. laptops out, oh, yeah. we were gathered around a, di a big dining room table. Yep, sure. We worked it that we worked. weekend. Yes, mm -hmm. we walked away with our plan. And, and as you know, the challenge is you can have the best plan in the world. And if you're not in alignment with it or you don't, you know, you've got stuff that you still need to heal or you, you can't keep your mind yeah, focused, focused on what you need to focus on, your energy focused where it needs to go, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter if you're fighting the demons of like procrastination or self-sabotage or lack of confidence, you know. Here you have this great plan, but if you're not willing to pick up the phone and be rejected, you might not be able to make a sale or if you're not willing to put a picture of yourself on a website, you know, I don't know. You know, totally. there's so many hangups totally. yeah. that get in yeah. the way of executing a strategy. It's not as yeah. simple as like, here's the strategy, go execute. All yeah. that happens in between is you, is me, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, 
And, so, and if we're talking about culture, that's one of the most powerful things you've built in your culture is having this shared values and shared agreements. And, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because we share a lot of the same values, especially around business and life. And yet, They're very very different people. We're all very different people. And there's a wide spectrum of beliefs um, for a lot of things. Yeah. And yet we are all in agreement that, you know, certain things will, we will, you know. Honor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so what's amazing, I think, about the culture is we can come in. This is the place where um, you can come in and say, like, can you help me with this? Or I'm struggling with this. Mm-hmm. Or what do I do about this? This yeah. client, this thing, this whatever. And there's a whole group of people who will say, you know, hey, first of all, a lot of them will say, call me. Yeah. Like, let's get on the call right now. I'll help you work it out. Yeah. Um, a lot of them will say, here's a resource. Here's, here's a book. Here's how I did it. Go listen yeah. to this. Here's the meditation. Here's, here's a, a checklist. And here's a checklist. And it's, and, and it's help on both that kind of what some could call esoteric or the like um the, the 3d the, the the tangible and the yeah and then the non-tangible mm-hmm. the like oh sounds to me like it's not the fact that you know you don't know what to say on your call script <laughs> it's more you're afraid to pick up the phone right. why are you afraid to pick up the phone or right. why are you afraid to hold that boundary with that client right you know why are you afraid to do that and let's go in let's go alchemize that mm-hmm. that will make the shift more than you know this Here's a new strategy. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I think you're right. Like one of the biggest evolutions has been aligning toward a br- a bigger worldview or like a, a worldview that holds more perspectives for me mm-hmm. and also like narrowing the, the, the values. Like for example, holding better, higher standards yes. for yes. the values. So I'm not saying, well, do you believe this or do you believe that or do you follow this religion or it's not that. That, that kind of is the filter. The filter is, you know, are you a human that values and cares about other humans? Are you someone who values, you know, for example, expression? Yeah. Right? Yeah. These are people that align on values, so we don't have to have the same belief system. Right. One of the values is respect and right. honoring, uh, right. you know, differences of opinion. So I'd say that. And so one of the biggest shifts I think I've seen with our culture is, is who's coming in. For sure. Right. For sure. And it's, it's up-leveled. I mean, to the point where sometimes I'm like, I'm glad I'm still a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's but, it, but it's funny. We do laugh about this. Like, I really, it's like there, there's a part of me that wishes I could go back to that first family vacation and show that girl, <laughs> both of us, a video of what we do now, who we've become, oh my and also God. what we're doing. Because you would have been like, who, we both what? Like, what? We do what? The yeah. That? <laughs> and that's why I've been here for so long, because yeah. it's never the same. Mm-hmm. And that's what I see in the coaching industry a lot, is is there are coaches who are very bright. Yes. And you know, and they've gone a course, and they've figured something out, and now they're teaching that to people, but they just teach this thing. Yeah. And that's the only thing they do, mm-hmm. and they do it their way or the highway. Right. And there's no evolution for them. Right. And because there's no evolution for them, there's no evolution for the people that are coming through. Right. And it doesn't allow for that uh, the brilliance to ex- expand and to come in mm-hmm. and to just change everything. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I feel like giving myself permission and doing I've done so much work on myself and then that also is a model for the people in the group. A thousand times, yes. I would say. Yeah. So that's another. So we've talked about leadership as a big factor in culture. We've talked about values mm-hmm. as a big factor in culture. What are some of the other things that you notice? Well, uh, language. We have a shared say, language. Yeah, yeah. language. <laughs> talk, talk a little bit about that, and that'll probably be the last thing we talk about. All right. One of my favorite expressions in the world that I use all the time is I invite you to consider. Mm-hmm. I learned that from you and it's so in our culture and it's <laughs> it just feels so good. It's instead of you should, why don't you, or hey, go do this. I invite you to consider, I invite you to consider. On the re- receiver end, whoever you're saying that to, they're like, oh, well maybe I could consider that mm-hmm. versus you should feels very like, no, no, I shouldn't. Like you mm. preachy and forceful yeah. and people resist. Yeah. They just, they resist. Yeah. So. And it's just, I mean, who would want an invitation? Yeah. Yeah. An and invitation. then just consider <laughs> and you can consider it and decide it's not for you. That's but right. Yeah. I love that. I love it. I say that like at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said it at a networking event one time and this other person who was standing there was like, 
oh, that was really interesting language. I like the way you said that. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> we do a lot with language. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of words like alignment, which yeah. we've talked about earlier mm-hmm. today. I love the, what I know for sure is yeah. I got that from Oprah. Yeah. You know, sometimes when we're stuck in something confused, we can get, we can kind of go down into like a downward spiral of, mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't know. It's like, well, what do you know for sure? What do I know for sure? Well, I know for sure this. So it can help us to reorient towards what we do know and to start to listen more deeply. There's a lot of yeah. things like that with our language. We have a, sure. a real shared yes. vernacular, I would yes. say, and I think that contributes. Yeah. And also, I would say last thing, and then we'll we'll move on, yeah. uh, is, is these shared experiences that we have. Sure. We have these deep, deep, rich... Yeah experiences together yeah it's like when you go through something powerful with somebody else yeah you just it it evolves the relationship and it deepens the relationship so quickly and so it's interesting because there are people I've known for 5 10 15 20 years that don't know me as deeply as someone I've known for six months right because we've because when you've been on a mat crying with somebody yeah. out or they've helped you, they've seen you in a different way or yeah. they've helped you heal something that you didn't know until then had been kind of holding you back for a right. long time. Like there's a lot of, mm-hmm. there's energy there and, that's, there and, it's, and we really are there to support each other in that growth and development and there's just, to be seen by somebody like that and held with somebody like that, it's just, it's an experience you can't, replicate yeah so that's a big piece of building a culture yeah so we you know for those of you that are building your own culture you know making sure that you're staying in the work yourself not just preaching to others that you're really letting yourself evolve um that you're developing you know a, a codifying the language of the culture the values of the culture um and that you are creating these experiences for people to yeah. to share and have them together that's why i think that when you're building a culture it's very hard to actually do it online, you know, yeah. virtually. I yeah. think that part of my gift, my magic, and what I love is to be with people in person and to create these experiences in person. And I'm so glad to have created so many with you and had so many beautiful so many experiences. <laughs> yeah, me Thank too. You. Me too. Thank you so much, Leanne. Such a pleasure connecting with you and sharing some of our stories together. For those of you watching, if you're interested in having a journey kind of like the one Leanne had, but very unique to you, and you're interested in my programs, my services, working with me, having my eyes on your business, then visit superstaractivator.com slash go and learn more about what it looks like to get on a call with me. Let me start by saying there's one thing that it's not. And I know we don't usually talk about what it's not. And I realize that if some people could think no regrets means like, woo, let's party, do whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, no regrets, right? It's not really about that. The first step of it is committing and committing to yourself first above okay. anything else. Okay. And the idea behind that is you want to live your life in a way so that, you know, when you're sitting back, it's not even saying about the end of life. What if you're, what if you're sitting back next week mm-hmm. and you say, man, I wish I would have given that a try. Mm-hmm. What would have happened if I would have said yes to this experience? Right. What if I would have turned right instead of turned left? Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I'm, I'm getting into with no regrets. It can be big, sure.